Hello everybody and welcome to the DSLR workshop, the free online show teaching you all about photography and not about gear and also showing you how to maximize the power of your digital SLR camera. Alright, here we are in episode 5 and what we're going to talk about this week is we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about autofocus and we're also going to talk about shooting modes for your camera. Okay. And when I'm talking about shooting modes, we're not talking about aperture priority and shutter priority and that stuff like we've covered before. We're going to talk about your shutter release modes. All right. So we'll go ahead and start off with autofocus. All right. Cameras have awesome autofocus this day, these days. You can autofocus in low light, um, in, in very little light, and it does really good. Um, most cameras have this little light here called an autofocus assist illuminator. So you can see it come on there. And what that does is that helps the camera focus in low light situations by shining a little light out there and giving the camera something to see. Okay, And the camera will focus on what it sees. Now, autofocus isn't perfect, and so you have to be able to kind of tailor it to whatever you're shooting or to uh, the lighting situations that you're in to be able to be successful and get great shots that are sharp using your autofocus. Okay, Otherwise, you've got to rely on manual focus and looking through a little viewfinder, especially in low light, you're probably going to miss focus nine chances out of ten, especially if you're using a very shallow depth of field. Okay, all right. So we're going to break this down into two parts, really. Okay, you've got autofocus area modes, and then you have autofocus modes in terms of the servo system in the camera. Okay. Now, autofocus area modes, what those allow you to do is uh, remember I talked about how you've got several different focus points inside the camera. Well, your uh, autofocus area modes, like you have single point, which will allow you to sec select an individual point that you want to focus on, um, be it in the very center, off to the side, or up in the top or the bottom of the camera, right? That's single point. Now you also have a dynamic point, and what dynamic point does, and, and Canon and Sony probably call it something different, I'm calling it based off of what Nikon calls it, but dynamic allows you to kind of select an area uh, where you, you think your focus is going to be, and then your autofocus will pick out of the focus points in that group what it thinks is going to be the best point to focus on as far as interpreting what your subject is. Okay. And then lastly, uh, with the Nikon cameras, you have an auto area mode, which means the camera is just going to select it based on where it thinks your subject is. Okay. And if you're using um, fully auto or programmed auto, most of the time that's what you're, especially in full auto, your camera is going to be in that auto focus mode. It's going to pick automatically what you want to do unless you specifically go in and tell it to do something different. Program auto, that's where it gives you an advantage. It allows you to change that uh, where full auto is just the camera is going to be completely automatic. So it's going to select those focus points and decide what it thinks your subject is, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's your autofocus area modes, and that's what they do. Now, you have servo modes for your autofocus, and what those control is those control the uh, camera's ability to lock focus or, or, what it's, or how it's going to lock focus, I should say. Now, uh, for example, on the D90, you have uh, AFS. Well, and this is all on Nikon's cameras. You have an AFS, which is a single point autofocus mode. Okay, And that means that wherever you lock focus, as in you press the shutter button down halfway when you focus on a subject, and you press and hold that shutter button down halfway, what it's going to do is it's going to stay there until you release it. So if I lock focus here and get my camera to lock focus and I move, the focus point is still going to be, or the, the camera is not going to readjust focus. It's going to stay at a focus area that it saw where I was initially autofocusing the camera. All right. And that's great for most people. If you're shooting portraits, if you're shooting something that's still like still life, or you're shooting flowers, something that's not really moving around a whole lot, that's great. The next mode is the autofocus continuous or AFC. What that does is whenever you focus and lock focus on a subject, if that subject moves, the camera is going to refocus. Now this is really helpful if you're shooting action like sports or you're at the race or you know animals moving around, whatever you want to do. If your subject is moving, that's when you're going to want to use that AFC mode or autofocus continuous servo. And that's what that stands for. Like AFS is single servo, AFC is continuous servo. So that's when you'd want to use that. If you're, if you're in a situation, your subject's moving, use AFC. If your subject's going to be standing still, AFS, which will lock focus whenever you hold that shutter button down halfway, and it'll stay there until you let it go. Okay. Now, some of the Nikon cameras, 
have one other mode, and that's called uh, AFA, which is autofocus auto. Now what that mode does is it allows the camera to detect what your subject is or whether or not your subject's stationary or moving and it makes a decision for you. So if you're in a situation, say you're shooting kids playing at the park and you might get a shot where you know your child's standing still and then you know 30 seconds later they're running around and you don't want to have to fumble around with am I an AFA or am I an AFC? So you can select autofocus auto and it'll make the decision for you. Now some of the higher end cameras when you get into uh, the more professional model cameras, they're not going to include that mode, uh, at least on the Nikon side of the house. Um, so that's where the prosumer and the consumer level DSLRs are really great because they allow you to uh, take that auto mode and use it to your advantage. Okay, now also speaking of autofocus, there's a couple of different places on most cameras where you can control it. Um, one area is on a lens a lot of times. Now this lens, Nikon lenses usually have an autofocus button on the side for manual focus or autofocus and I can turn it on and off there. Uh, this is a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens so it doesn't have an autofocus mode. Um, but also on my camera here I've got a little button for autofocus or manual focus. Okay, And on uh, some of the higher end cameras this button will be either manual focus, uh, continual servo or continuous servo, servo can't talk, and then uh, your uh, single servo. So you'll have those three selections there. So mine stays in autofocus most of the time. Usually if I want to turn it off, I turn it off at the lens. Um, I don't really worry about this too much. But if your camera won't autofocus and you don't know why, it's always a good place to check right there. Usually your lens is in place and this gets moved when you're taking it out of your camera bag or whatever. All right. So that's your autofocus stuff. All right. We'll go ahead and move on to our next subject, which is your shooting modes. Now when I'm talking about shooting modes, I'm talking about your shutter release, okay? And your camera's got several different ways to release the shutter. Uh, you've got a single, you know, single shot, you've got a continuous shot, and then you usually at least have a timer, okay? And uh, so we'll, we'll cover those and uh, maybe a few others. But in single shutter release mode, what's gonna happen is the shutter's gonna open and close for every single time you push the button. So if I focus, on the video camera and take a shot, I had to push the shutter button twice to make that happen. If I hold my finger down, it's not going to release the shutter again. Okay, and that's your single shot autofocus. Now, if I change it, I'm sorry, single shot shutter release. Don't let me confuse you there. All right, so now if I go to uh, continuous mode, and, and my camera has a continuous low and a continuous high, which I can change those functions in camera in the menus. Um, to make my continuous low like three frames a second and my continuous high is four and a half frames a second which is the fastest that the D90 shoots at. Now when I hold the shutter button down and I lock focus what's going to happen is as, as long as it can track autofocus it's going to release the shutter. Okay, So it'll do that continue to write stuff to your memory card as long as you hold down that shutter button. Now what's going to slow you up with uh, continuous shooting mode is your buffer. And the camera's got a buffer memory in there that it initially writes images to while it's waiting to write them to the card. And depending on the speed of your memory card will determine how fast it can empty out the buffer and write them to the card. Um, but as long as you've got something you can lock focus on, like I'm going to lock focus on one of the lights here, and you can see I can get it at a, at a very high rate of speed. Okay, the other thing that affects that is what uh, type of image you're using, whether you're shooting a JPEG image or you're shooting a raw image. Uh, raw images are bigger, so they're going to fill up the buffer faster. Okay, so they finished writing all those. I'll s I'm, I'm shooting raw images, so uh, and we'll talk about that in another episode, but I'm shooting raw images, so I'll go ahead and lock my focus, and I'm just going to let it go. Okay, so I got to 11 before my buffer started to fill up. All right, now, once those write to the card and I change my format to say JPEG, um, what's gonna happen then is you'll see I can, can, can get a lot more shots. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll adjust my quality settings and I'll go to, let's go with JPEG Basic. Okay, and on my eight gig card at JPEG Basic, I'm gonna get 4,100 images, but they're gonna be very small, okay? Now, I can lock focus on my subject. And as long as it gets that autofocus, it's going to continue to go. 
okay? And all it's doing is just writing them to the buffer, but because it's a smaller file size, it'll write them to the buffer, take up less room, and it'll continue to shoot as it's dumping them off the buffer onto the memory card, okay? So, and like I said, raw and JPEG, that's a, that's a topic for another episode, and, and we'll, uh, we'll discuss more on that and go into depth on each of those file types and which is better and what has advantages and what has disadvantages and so on and so forth, all right? All right, well, that's it for this episode. We covered uh, autofocus area modes. We covered your uh, autofocus servo modes for your uh, single point and or your uh, single servo and continuous servo as well as auto. And then we also just talked about uh, using your continuous low and continuous high. One other function that I don't want to leave out, though, is the timer function, okay? And the timer function, or self-timer as it's often called, is really handy because if you're in a situation where you want to get a really tack sharp shot and you don't have a cable release that will connect to your camera so that when it's sitting on your tripod you can hit the button and not touch your camera, you can use the self-timer mode, okay? And what, what that does is say you set it to about five seconds, so it's got enough time that after you hit the shutter release and let go of the camera, all the shake will go away and then the shutter will open and close. It's also handy if you want to take a family photo, you know, a self-portrait or something. You can set it on your tripod or on a table or whatever else you've got handy. Hit your shutter release button and you know you've got that amount of time to be able to go get in the frame and the camera will take a shot and you don't have to be on the other side of it. Okay? So that's it for episode five. Thanks for coming along with us. Don't forget that you can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash the DSLR workshop. Find us on Facebook and become a fan at facebook.com forward slash the DSLR workshop. And of course, as always, our website, www.thedslrworkshop.com. All right, we'll see you next week. Hope you guys have a great week of shooting, and thanks for coming along with us. Take care.